Thank you for purchasing a DF9800 flat incline decline bench. Your DF9800 will come in two boxes. Box one will contain smaller boxes that have seat pads, back pads, rollers, frame, shoes, hardware, and all loose flanges and caps. The smaller box two will contain backrest mount, feet, seat flanges, adjustment support, leg hold down tube, seat adjuster tube, and roller tube. The shoes on this bench are a tight fit. This is to make sure that they stay on when moving it around. It's always a good idea to stretch and work the shoe a little bit before installation. The easiest way to install the shoe is to slide three sides over the tube and then pull the fourth side over the edge of the tube with your fingertips. Make sure that the long bottom of the shoe is perpendicular to the holes, which should be on the side of the tube. On the back foot, it's very important that the right side of the tube is facing up. There's a flat part of the wheel flange and an angled part of the flange. Make sure that the angle side faces down. With all four shoes on, we're ready to put the frame together. There are two M12 bolt sizes in the bolt pack that are similar in length. The shorter of the two will be bolting the feet to the frame. For the frame assembly, go ahead and grab both feet, the white flanges, and the four short bolts with washers and nuts. With one washer already on the bolt, thread it through the flange hole in the front of the frame. Then line it up through the tube, the flange, the other washer, and cap it off with a nut finger tight. Repeat for the other hole. On the back foot, make sure the wheels are facing behind the bench. Thread the bolt with the washer through the other flange, the tube, and through the frame flange. Cap it off with a washer and a nut. Next, we're going to install the black flanges. These also take the shorter style bolt that we've been using. Make sure that the large radius goes on the top hole, leaving the smaller, sharper radius poking out the front. This leads us to the backrest frame assembly. On the backrest frame, line the adjustment support holes up with the tube in the middle of the frame. With the longest M12 bolt, thread it through a washer, then through the adjustment support and frame, then cap it off with another washer and nut. Installing the seat flanges might be the trickiest part of this whole procedure. For this step, we're going to use one of the larger sized medium M12 bolts we talked about earlier. First, take your bolt with a washer and thread it through the back hole of the seat flange. Make sure that the bent part of the flange is facing out away from the frame. If you set the adjustment support in the ladder bars, you can line up the bolt hole in the frame with one hand. Fish the bolt through the frame and then install the other seat flange. When that's done, finish it off with a washer and a nut, finger tight. For the seat adjuster tube, it's very important that we use the short M12 bolt on the bottom and the longer M12 bolt on top. First, thread the bolt with the washer through the black flange, then the bottom of the tube. Make sure the pull pin is facing the right if you're looking at the bench from head on. Cap it off with a washer and a nut. Next. Thread the long bolt through the hole in the middle of the seat flange, then the top of the tube, then the other seat flange. Finish it off with a washer and a nut, finger tight. Before we go any farther, we're going to install the seat pad while we have maximum wiggle room. Grab four of the short M10 bolts and washers. 
thread them through the bottom of the seat flange into the nut surge on the bottom of the seat pad. It makes it easier to lay underneath the bench to see the bolt holes through the slots. Line up the bolt holes and get all four threads started before tightening. Now is a good time to bolt on the backrest. Grab the remaining six M10 bolts and washers and bolt the backrest to the frame. This can be a tricky step sometimes. To make it easier on yourself, only thread the bolts in a couple of turns each until all six are started. If you tighten the bolts right away, you'll have no chance of getting all six in. When you get all six in, go ahead and tighten them up with a wrench. This brings us to the leg hold down assembly. Install the leg hold down tube with the remaining long M12 bolts and washers. Make sure that the handle on the tube is facing up. With the final two bolts in, it's time to tighten everything up. On a flat floor, use two wrenches to tighten the bolts holding the feet to the frame. All the nuts on the frame are lock nuts, so you have to tighten the bolt past the nylon insert in the nut. The nylon insert holds the nut to the bolt and makes sure that it doesn't come loose during use, but it's still a good idea to check them once a year or so to make sure that they're still tight. With the back foot tight, go ahead and tighten the front. Next. Tighten the bolts holding the black flanges to the frame. After you get these bolts tight, snug the bolt holding the seat adjuster tube. You don't want this bolt too tight because it can bind up the seat going up and down, so make sure you give it a check before you move on. Tighten the bolts to the leg holder tube and then snug the bolt on the top of the seat adjuster tube. Again, make sure that you haven't bound up the action on the seat. We haven't installed the rollers yet to make tightening the bolts in the area easier. So with all the bolts tight, grab the roller tube and the pads and install them on the leg holder tube. If you don't have a mallet, a dumbbell works just as well for driving the mushroom caps into the tube. Next step is the most important of the whole assembly process, so take your time. Start by getting the pivot bolt in the middle of the bench snug, and then check the wobble of the backrest, then the action of the seat. This is a balancing act where you want to get the bolt tight enough to get the wobble out of the backrest, but not too tight where it binds up the action on the seat going up and down. You'll have to check multiple times to get it right. Once you're happy with the results, move on to the adjustment bar in the middle of the frame. This is the last place you have an opportunity to take wobble out of the backrest. Again, you want it tight, but not so tight it can't move. Finally, install your Deltec Fitness decal to let everyone know you have a piece of quality equipment. Make sure the pull pin is properly seated before use. If you sit down and it's not seated, you'll be in for a surprise. This bench will handle anything you throw at it and should deliver a lifetime of heavy use. Thank you for choosing Deltec Fitness.